What's going on, Fragrance family? Welcome to another episode of Taking a Test Drive. This series is where I wear a scent on my skin as my scent of the day for several days, including today, from my own personal collection. And it's time to give you my thoughts before it goes into the vault for a full-fledged review. Today's test drive is on the House of Hermes and part of their Hermes Essence line, which is called Mir Eglantien. Sniffing out the brand of Hermes after the departure of Elena is a little sad for me. I tried to give Nagel her just due and not compare her to the great Elena, my favorite perfumier of all time. Honestly, she has done well with the brand, in my personal opinion. This is one of her early Hermes Essence releases. Um, I believe she did a mega bulk uh, release. I think this one, there was an Agar one, Sed, among others. Um, so let's see what she did with the note of myrrh. So let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this one. Release date was back in 2018. So this was one of her, if not her first Hermes Essence uh, nose is of course, Christine Nagel. Um, of course, I feel um, does just do to the brand of Hermes. Uh, she has been doing quite well, at least from the stuff that I've sniffed. Uh, major notes to my nose in this particular release. A major note is, of course, rose. We do have violet, and we do have a little pinch of myrrh. Like I said earlier, this is my scent of the day, but I do want to remind myself of the introduction. Um, great atomizer on these Edemus Essence bottles. Um, so off the top, this fragrance is very crisp opening. I'm a very bright. Uh, the opening of Mir Eglantin shows me right away this isn't going to be a big, thick, uh, myrrh-based scent, but more based on the Rose Eglantin in the opening. The Zetima's Essence opens very thin, watery, watercolor-like, exactly like a typical Elena style. I was intrigued by Nagel's opening releases of Hermes Essence because it felt like she was going more into the Middle Eastern style with notes like myrrh, oud, among others, to construct the Hermes Essence line her way. I was surprised when sniffing this one that it really wasn't that. It wasn't, it, it was going more towards the typical Hermes, Elena style DNA that we come to expect from the brand. Um, honestly, and, and I know the caps, the leather around the cap and the coloring on the bottles. And as you can see here, it almost has like a peach pink like hue and it's exactly what it smells like. The, again, the representation of the bottle, um, the marketing department did well with what's inside this bottle. Now, what I get up top in this release is tons of rose, which kind of toes the line between a jammy, thicker rose and a watery, dewy rose. Very authentic, very well done. Mostly to my nose, a dewy rose up top with a citrusy splash. The citrus, while fairly mid, um, smelt like an, an orange to me. And the violet helps this watery aspect of the rose, almost giving you a shimmering rose petals that just got rained on. Um, so that's where my imagery goes with this one. At times I did feel a little fruity nuance, apple-like, but it's very subtle. Um, and it'll be something I'll key on of course, with further testing on this one, because again, it's not the other road with me. I'm going to go and put it in the vault for full-fledged review and wear it a bunch of times. Now, also, not only that, but I also have a aldehydic fuzziness, a champagne-like quality in this opening that truly aids the thinness of this set. The myrrh itself slowly introduces it. I mean, like molasses slowly introduces itself here in the opening, but more so as a background note um, in this release, failing to give really any punch up top. It's still very thin, very watery, so you're not getting much of the DNA of the myrrh. It just giving the scent just a little bit of a dustiness. There's no smoke. There's no real resinous quality here. Just a thin darkness in the background. So not to overshadow this beautiful rose note. Um, so that's where I go with the opening of this. Um, the opening of Mir Eglantin is all about that rose and it gets the support from a thinned out, and I mean thinned out, myrrh note. It's clean, 
Um, at times, wearing it almost feels kind of soapy in a clean way, uh, but it truly has that Elena watercolor feel in this release. So Najal kind of took a page of Elena here in the opening of Mir Eglantin. Now delving more into the heart and the deeper dry down of Mir Eglantin, it continues to push this rose dominant opening on your skin. The myrrh, which I was anticipating for it to show its face as a primary note, really never took over the scent. I felt the rose continued to beat down the myrrh, uh, which is quite unique in a fragrance since myrrh is one of the heaviest materials to utilize in a fragrance, but Nigel successfully beat the note down to a whisper. Honestly, it's a great fragrance, but I was a little disappointed of the strength of the myrrh note in this scent as I was kind of hoping for something a little darker. The myrrh note as a background note in strength in the opening, I'd give it a one out of 10. It was very like whisper quiet. It was, hard, it's, it was hardly a pillar in the scent. And then more the fragrance stays on the skin, the lighter notes start dissipating and basically have no choice but to give limelight to that myrrh note, which goes from a one in 10 in strength to maybe like a four out of 10. It never went full ambery on me. It never went full dark. It really stayed with this watercolor feel. Not much changes in this dry down except, of course, the myrrh note going up a few notches, but never shows its bite here. Um, so it's a rose-based scent at the end of the day. Overall, Mir Englantin is another well-composed watercolor from the brand. It is. Um, I enjoy wearing it. Personally, not a stand-up from the brand. I like others from the Hermes Essence line. Um, they speak more to me than this one, but it's still a very solid release from um, the brand. And I'm, you know, I can't wait to wear it some more and uh, try out some more. And maybe I'll, I'll find some more nuances in this release. So now let's get into Seasons Day Night Versatility and Performance. Uh, seasons, I feel like spring, um, again, it's a rose dominant scent that doesn't have much bite to it. Spring, early fall, this is great for that. Day or night, I feel like this is more of a daytime scent, like a casual dress up too. I mean, it could be your signature workday scent, things like that. Uh, versatility on this one, very high. Um, it's very thin as a scent. Um, again, I wouldn't wear it in the cool, cool weather outside or anything like that. Nobody's gonna smell you. Uh, but other than that, the versatility is pretty high on this one. Performance, longevity. A little light on the longevity, five to seven hours. It's still good, but not great. And projection is below average. So this is one of those that pushes a little bit in the first hour, but then it really goes more of a skin scent. So performance, unfortunately, not so great on this one. So my final thoughts on Mira Iglantin by the House of Hermes. In this scent, I felt like Nagel embraced her inner Elena, and I've said it a few times in this review, and showing that classic watercolor Hermes um, DNA. At the end of the day, it almost felt like this release, she didn't feel like putting her imprint on the ultra expensive and rich Hermes Essence line and kind of played it safe. Either way, the Hermes Essence line already has its rose base scent, but I'm keeping myself open that this was a solid release as a standalone set, but personally, I wished for more myrrh. It wears like an EDC, like most Emma's Essence. It keeps that light energy, watercolor hue throughout the release. This isn't your heavy myrrh base set, so that would be one takeaway if you're looking to buy this one or blind buying this one and seeing the name and going, oh, maybe something a little darker. At the end of the day, Mire Glantin smells expensive and minimalistic like a lot of the Hermes Essence line. The quality is there, and I do feel that it, it is worth a sniff, especially if you like this kind of style, um, you like your rose-based scents, um, if you like Elena's watercolor style, this may be right up your alley. Now I'm done with Mire Glantin. Um, it's time for you to hit us up in the comments below. If you have any thoughts on this release, please let us know what you think about it. Looking forward to reading your comments. A greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.